Let's talk about the economic argument of legalizing marijuana. What would it, could it mean bottom line for, for governments across the country if we legalized and allowed the sale of marijuana? Up to $30 billion a year, Andrew, right off the bat. It already is America's number one cash crop. Uh, the problem is that none of it is taxed and none of it is part of the above ground economy. That all goes to the cartels. And if it were to be taxed, the, the, the business model would hold? I mean, people would still be willing to buy it. It would still uh, have the sales at the level, even if the government were to take a 10, 15, 25 percent out of it? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, talk about what would happen to prices. Would prices drop? But, you know, we saw what happened at the end of alcohol prohibition, which was, you know, we developed a pretty robust legal and taxed uh, alcohol uh, industry. So uh, no fear there. And we're only talking here about the psychoactive side. On the industrial side, um, massive potential on biofuels and uh, much more efficient than corn or soy as a possible source of weaning from foreign oil. You mentioned prohibition. Uh, enforcing prohibition, of course, comes with a cost, the war on drugs. How much could we save just by eliminating marijuana from our focus in the war on drugs? Well, for the last 40 years, over the last 40 years, we've spent $1 trillion of our taxpayer dollars to almost no effect. So uh, there's that money right there. We're putting something like $9 billion a year just in domestic enforcement enforcement in quotes there because it doesn't it doesn't do anything so um, if we transfer that much needed money to other sectors sectors of our society just keeping some in line for things like education and making sure that there isn't a use increase um, it's going to have have a huge uh, sort of public sector uh, benefit in bottom line as well you know Doug I can hear people already yelling at the TV said well this is just going to make for a nation of stoners or is certainly going to uh, make us less safe. What kinds of things can we put in place to make sure that people don't drive under the influence of marijuana? Is there a sufficient testing? How we make sure it doesn't get into the hands of kids? Those kinds of application of a legalization law uh, uh, focus. Andrew, that's a good question. And I just want to say before, before I answer it that maybe some people are yelling, but I've been surprised in my year of researching this topic and living on the front lines of the drug war to find how uh, widespread and increasing the support is for ending the drug war among all demographics. I'm talking about seniors. You've got Pat Robertson on the religious side. You've got George Shultz, Ronald Reagan's Secretary of State. Um, people are just aware of the fact that it doesn't work. Um, as for what would happen, it's similar uh, concerns before alcohol prohibition uh, ended 80 years ago. And, um, you know, I don't have an absolute crystal ball about what would happen to use rates. But as you alluded um, uh, earlier, uh, cannabis, almost every study shows, is uh, significantly less dangerous than alcohol. What the real epidemic is in our country is prescription pill abuse. And uh, so I'm not particular. I'm a father of two. I'm not particularly concerned about use rates um, going up. It can't possibly get easier to get than it is today uh, from unscrupulous, you know, cartel-based people that couldn't care less with, uh, to whom they're selling. But you're convinced we could come up with a way to make sure that you know there, there are limits or tests for people who are driving under the influence or systems in place to prevent kids from buying it. Yeah, you know, one of the com there is, that is what you've hit on is one of the most complex issues post cannabis legalization, which is um, how to test. Because unlike alcohol, where it's fairly simple blood alcohol content, um, THC, the psychoactive element in cannabis, stays in your system uh, longer, and so you're not under the influence of it when you'd still test for it. So I'm quite convinced that science uh, could come up with a way of uh, testing people. Uh, not so much based on exact amount of THC, but rather, you know, uh, your competence to be, let's say, operating a vehicle at a particular moment. Finally, Doug, you mentioned certain differences in generational uh, approaches to it. Uh, the older you get, the, the less experience people have with it and the more they oppose it. The younger uh, people you ask have more experience with it and seem to favor it. Uh, is this a question of if not when this becomes legal? And what do you think is stopping politicians from taking a stand and supporting legalization? I do definitely think it's a question of if, um, it, you know, it, it's a question of when, not if. Um, but um, amazingly, I'm not finding a whole lot of uh, older folks that are 
opposed to ending the drug war anymore. Um, to some degree, it's generational, but at this point, you've got people who first, uh, you know, had positive experience with cannabis, let's say, in the 60s, and now they're becoming senior citizens, and they don't like the effects of some of the prescription drugs that they take, and they're finding cannabis, let's say, might be helping with their arthritis with far fewer side effects. Um, so um, it's, it seems to me like America's ready for it. As for what's keeping the politicians um, from hearing what uh, Gary Johnson calls the greatest disconnect between Americans and their, and their uh, elected officials, um, is... Uh, inertia. We've got uh, multi-billion dollar um, bureaucracy, private prison industry. We've just got a lot of forces in place that would like to keep another 40 years and another trillion dollars of our tax dollars flowing towards this you know, ridiculous, very un-American war. And so um, what it will take is people deciding that on the economic end, it's imperative to get this revenue flow from America's number one cash crop back into the legitimate economy. And it's not some sort of, you know, immature college uh, stoner issue or something. It's, it's really something that uh, is for the good of America. Doug Fine, author, author of Too High to Fail. Doug, thanks for a few minutes of your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew.